Now let's get a look at the bigger picture. Eddie Gabor, owner, Key Advisors, is with us. You've been bearish the last couple of times you've been on with us. I've heard people talking about 20%, 30% to go to the downside. What say you? So look, I think to put a percentage on it, no one really knows. I think you just have to follow the trend because at the end of the day, it's gonna really come down to two main things. Number one is how aggressive the Fed's gonna continue to be with QT and rate hikes, and then how bad earnings get. Uh, we believe that you're going to see lots of earnings revisions here going into this fourth quarter. Uh, we absolutely believe that the market's going to hit a new low before it does hit a new high. Uh, but look, coming into tomorrow's meeting, we are probably oversold here. So you could get another bear bounce. But again, it's nothing more than a bear bounce. So we think we're going to get to the lows and lower. Uh, because the backdrop is one of the toughest that any investor has seen in recent memory. When you take a look at the global dynamic of potentially going into a global recession with 40-year highs in inflation, with Federal Reserve tightening monetary policy at a historic rate, it's a very tough environment. Yeah, and it's my understanding that as long as the short end of the curve is around this 4% level, um, that any rallies we see could be fake outs. What do you think of that statement that I've heard? I agree. And look, that's how it's been all year long. So these bear market rallies are very typical in a bear market. And what it does is it sucks people in, gives them false hope, and then they get whipsawed back to new lower lows. And that has been a cycle that's been happening all year. Uh, this is why we have a very large cash position in our tactical strategies, because what will ultimately come from all of this is some of the best buying opportunities we've seen in a long time. You just have to be a little bit more patient, because look, we haven't seen the worst of it yet. And, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to bottom really to the first half of next year for the market. So not bottom until the first half of next year. So do you watch that same level, the June lows that Ben is watching, that 36, 39 level? Yes. I mean, if we blow through that, then, I mean, wh where is it? Where is the bottom going to be there? And again, it's going to be a culmination of really understanding the dynamic of how bad the earnings are going to be. Uh, because I think one thing that is common sense is when you double the cost of capital for a company, at the same time that you're heading into a recession, you have to expect earnings to come in and profit margins to really get cracked. That's not priced into the market yet. So there'll be some buying opportunities here in the fourth quarter. We will start nibbling, but it'll be more on the defensive side of names. We won't get real aggressive until the first half of next year. But that's when we think we'll be closer to that box. Yeah, what kind of, uh, you said you'll be buying and maybe buying some defensive type names. What areas are you looking at or what kinds of names? So right now in our tactical strategy, uh, the only equity sectors that we have exposure to is consumer staples and utilities. Uh, we actually did add a little bit to utilities on Monday at the open during the big down drop that we had. Uh, we also have a little bit of energy exposure. Those are the only three equity exposures we have. We don't have any technology, no small cap exposure, uh, or any of the high beta names in our tactical strategies. Those will be the things that we'll be looking to buy in the first half of next year. Uh, this year, uh, in the fourth quarter, it will be sticking with those defensive names. And then energy is just an outlier. I mean, the supply-demand dynamic uh, is, is no secret that supply is real tight. And as we're heading into the winter months, uh, we think we'll see demand really pick up. And uh, that could cause oil prices to get back to the 100 range. So we wanted some exposure there. How badly... Uh, could we suffer here? I mean, if we're, are you talking global recession? What does it mean for folks? Is there any way to quantify how bad things could get? So uh, the unfortunate reality is this is, an, and I said this uh, at the beginning of the year, this is the worst setup I've seen in my 20 plus year career, just because we were coming, in my opinion, off of the largest bubble of our lifetime. So if the Fed follows through with what they say they're going to do with reducing their balance sheet by $90 billion a month for the foreseeable future, and they continue to raise rates at an aggressive rate and ignore all these warnings that we're getting from the FedExes of the world, then it's going to get a lot worse, in my opinion. Um, they step off say, the uh, Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, when you say largest bubble of a lifetime, what part of the market, in your mind, was a bubble or parts? 
Could you be serious? Look, I mean, you can close your eyes and throw a dart at it. You've got crypto, you have housing, you have the small caps, you have the meme stocks. I mean, we had record amount of money being printed, and people were putting that money into the markets. We had interest rates at multi-year lows. That was going in for people borrowing money and buying real estate. And one by one by one, these bubbles are bursting. Uh, and the bond market, too. I mean, when's the last time you've seen the long end of the curve lose 20 to 30 percent of its value on the fixed income side? Uh, so it's been an extremely difficult environment on the fixed income and equity side, which is why there's been very few places to hide other than cash. Yeah, understood. Eddie Gabor, thank you, owner of Key Advisors.